Hello, how are you all? I hope you're doing well. So President Biden, most of his cabinet picks have already been confirmed. There's a few more and not everyone is happy with, I guess, the lack of diversity within the cabinet picks. So you have two senators, Senator uh, Duckworth and Senator Hirano. We're very familiar with Senator Hirano and I'm going to show you a clip from her in just a second. So Recently, in the past week or two, in the wake of the shootings, we've had a lot of talk about uh, crimes on Asian Americans, which is good that we're having this conversation because it's been going, it's been happening all summer and probably even more before that, but it's it's been happening a lot more during the summer, especially in New York and the Bay Area, sort of San Francisco type area. And these attacks are pretty horrendous. There are people just walking home or walking on the sidewalk and completely unprovoked are being attacked. One man actually was attacked. He was just shoved. He was walking on the street, minding his own business, and he was shoved and actually died from that shove. Uh, the person was taken into custody, was arrested, so that's good. But that was one of the more horrific things that has happened. But yes, this has been happening a lot Uh all summer. The weird thing about the conversation coming up now is that the one instance that actually doesn't seem to be racially motivated, which is what happened in Atlanta, um, the the it was a terrible tragedy what happened in Atlanta. It's really awful and horrific. Uh, the 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 shooter uh, confessed when he was caught. Uh, the shooter completely confessed and said it didn't have anything to do with race. It had to do with a lot of other mental issues that he had. And he explained it there. We'll probably get into that maybe in another video. Um, and the the police even did an hour-long press conference where they said this was not racially motivated. But of course, still, uh, our politicians just jumped on this and used it as another uh, excuse to start pandering and racially dividing us. Again, um, these crimes against Asians have have been happening a lot. This is just the one instance where it doesn't seem with everything that we know so far, there is no evidence that supports this being racially motivated at all. And even still, after knowing this, after all this information was publicly available, they are still going with this narrative and calling it a, a hate crime against Asians or whatever it is that they're calling it. So the, the uh, anti-Asian um, crimes have been a topic of conversation. And uh, so these two senators, sort of in the wake of all of this, um, are opposing President Biden's picks. Uh, they're saying there are not enough AAPI people represented, represented in the cabinet. And AAPI is Asian American Pacific Islander. So Hirano and Duckworth are saying that there's not enough and they're not going to be voting on any cabinet members if they are not a racial minority or LGBTQ. So let's look at what's going on there. I'll read you a bit of this story and then uh, we'll watch a video by um, Hirano. She did an interview on MSNBC and then I'll tell you what happened in a result of that and that's it. But uh, this is from The Hill. And it says, okay, Senator Maisie Hirano uh, of Hawaii and Tammy Duckworth of, whoa, I, 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 is that Illinois? No. Sorry about that. I just turned my camera off to figure that out. It looks like, uh, it looks like three eyes and I've just never seen that before. Uh, yes, she's a senator out of Illinois, a Democratic senator out of Illinois. That's really interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, okay, so they both say that they will vote against President Biden's nominees amid frustration over the lack of Asian Americans and Pacific Islander representation and broader concerns about diversity in his cabinet. While most of Biden's core cabinet picks have already been confirmed, the opposition could be a significant hurdle into getting additional executive and judicial branch nominations through the 50-50 Senate, where the support of every Democrat is needed if Republicans line up against the nominee. Duckworth first told reporters on Tuesday that she had informed the White House that she would oppose any non-diversity nominees until she gets a commitment from the executive branch for more high-ranking Asian American nominations. I am a no vote on the floor on all non-diversity nominees. I will vote for racial minorities and LGBTQ, but anyone else I'm not voting for, said Duckworth, who is one of two Asian American senators. Duckworth pointed out that the top office of management and budget 
role, which doesn't have a nominee after the White House pulled uh, Neera Tandon's nomination, as well as the lead of the Federal Communications Commission, as positions where she is focused on lobbying the administration. Uh, The Illinois Democrat... (laughs) said that the White House could also make a commitment for future cabinet secretary, an actual cabinet secretary. And, okay, so that's what Duckworth said about everything. Let's look at this interview that Maisie did on MSNBC recently, where she is discussing the matter. Um, One of your colleagues, Senator Tammy Duckworth, said today that she told the White House she will vote against all of President Biden's nominees who are still outstanding uh, until they rectify the, the fact that there is no AAPI representation in Biden's cabinet. Do you stand with her in that? Tammy's, Tammy's position uh, is that until she gets a commitment from the White House that there will be more diversity representation in the cabinet and senior White House advisory positions, she will not vote to confirm anyone who does not represent diversity. So this is not about pitting one diversity group against another. I think this is a a well-articulated, focused position, and I am prepared to join her in that. Do you think the Biden administration has been adequately receptive to your entreaties for more diversity? Obviously not. Otherwise, uh, Tammy and I wouldn't be taking our position. But we do- would like to encourage them to do better. Sometimes when I'm watching some of these senators or elected officials talk, especially someone like Hirano, I can't, I look at them and I think, I would never, ever take advice from you, ever. I would never take advice from you. And you are a senator. It just blows my mind how these people are still in office. So basically what they're saying is, if you really break down what they're saying, this is, um, it's racist. (laughs) Uh, Basically what they're saying is, if you are white and straight, we do not want you. Uh, If you're white and straight, you are not allowed. Um, And they put, they make it, so you, you have to either be a racial minority, or what they say, a racial minority, or you have to be LGBTQ, which the Q means questioning technically. So <laughs> you could you could be a, a straight white person and, and they're sitting there in the hearings and they're asking you all the questions before you're confirmed. And you could literally just say, uh, you, you could have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband and a wife, maybe kids, I don't know. All you have to say is, well, yeah, I'm questioning. This is so silly. And also, I'm pretty sure it's illegal. I, I don't think you can ask anyone, especially what their uh, sexual orientation is when you are hiring them. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Now, Biden already has one of the most diverse cabinets already. And uh, Kamala Harris herself is an Asian American and she is the vice president, which is a pretty big deal in the United States and you know I think it's perfectly okay to advocate for people that you have that you think are qualified and and if you want to see more representation in this area or that that area I, I think it's perfectly fine to advocate for people or to advocate for whatever it is that you believe in you have that right but to sit there and say I will only, I will not vote for you if you are white and if you are straight. That, in fact, is bigotry, my friend. And that is how identity politics always just whip around and eat themselves. They never work. Nobody is ever satisfied. There's never enough representation for each group. And it's going to ebb and flow. When you're choosing a doctor, do you want to fill a diversity quota or do you want the best doctor that really knows what he's doing when you are picking a babysitter or a teacher or your or a school for your child are you looking for the most diverse or are you looking for the best education the best teachers the best babysitter that has the best record the most qualifications uh whenever you're choosing anything whether it's a service whether it's healthcare, uh, no matter what it is, you look for the best. When you're looking at the ratings 
uh, for any service, even when you're getting food or staying at a hotel, you're looking at the quality of service. You're not looking whether they are meet a whether they are meeting a diversity quota or not. Uh, when you are only putting attention on this, and somebody's that it it is just such a perverse. They have such a perverse obsession with identity, whether it's racial, whether it's sexual, whether it's anything. And it's just plain weird. And the majority of Americans don't care. The majority of Americans could care less. They just want someone to run our country. There is a bit of a uh, update. Uh, so Senator Hirano sent this out uh, yesterday and she said, um, in response to Jeff Zelaney. So Jeff Zelaney tweeted out, in response to Senator Duckworth and Mazzy Hirano, White House will add a senior AAPI, AAPI Asian American uh, Pacific Islander uh, liaison who will ensure the community's voice is further represented and heard, uh, the press secretary says. The president has made it clear that his administration will reflect the diversity of the country. And then uh, Senator Hirano responded with this. I welcome the appointment of a senior level White House liaison to the AAPI community to further strengthen our voice. I had a productive conversation with the White House today to make clear my perspective about the importance of diversity in the president's cabinet. So that's where we are. And I'm actually... Uh, I want to talk about this again. I'm I'm watching tonight. It is a, a a short little documentary on how identity politics are killing the state of California. Lady Justice, there's a reason she's blindfolded. I'll read this for you. Lady Justice is a well-known symbol of our justice system. She proudly holds scales which represent the weighing of evidence on its own. The blindfold represents our justice system being blind to a person's wealth power, gender, and race. And the reason this is so cringy is because, first of all, we all want equality. Everyone wants equality. Everyone wants equal opportunity. Everybody wants that. Those are amazing things. No one wants to see someone not get a job or not get opportunities because of the color of their skin, no matter what color that is, or because of their um, their sexual orientation, no matter what that orientation is. That's why this is illegal. It is illegal to not hire someone. Sorry about that. Uh, based on their, their race or based on their orientation. Uh, and this was recently update, uh, updated in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. But the reason this is so cringy is because it, it's almost not even about that. It's just this pathetic, empty, pandering, and they do it all the time. And I think people are just tired of it. I actually looked through some of the comments from some Democrats under that tweet that I just read, read you by Hirano. And even they are like, can you just stop? They're like, we don't even like Republicans, but you're giving them, you're giving them, a, <laughs> you're giving them an argument. You're giving them a reason to criticize you. You're making them right and we don't like you. Even Democrats are saying that. But let me know what you guys think about everything and I'll see you later. Bye.